life. We must always, when anything happens in our life, let's always go to Jesus for direction. Amen. Where's Jesus at? He's in your Bible. Amen. Everything is in the book. Everything that this life requires of us is in this book. Amen. It really is. If it's not in this book, then it's not required of us. Because he giveth life. And he giveth life more abundant. I love you today. I'm just thankful to be here. Glad to be amongst you. I feel the least amongst you today. Never been nobody much. I've always just been a, somebody that's loved the Lord and wanted to remind him and do what he'd have us to do. That's all we can do today. But we, uh, we love's on our heart today, which it always is. But uh, to be refreshed in love. We need to be refreshed in love. Who love really is. His name's Jesus. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's love. What did he give his life? That's the main thing. And that's that's what we should do for one another, the Bible teaches. We ought to lay down our life for one another. Right, when we come into this to be who Jesus is, we and we pray the prayer, Lord, teach me to love like you love. Well, we're gonna go to the first Corinthians uh, thirteen. First Corinthians thirteen. Just gonna mind the Lord. Well, preacher, it's going to be like it was last time. I don't know. It might be it or might not. It's whatever the Lord spits out, we'll go with it. <clears throat> I love the Lord. just want to depend on the Spirit today. Amen. Without the Spirit, we're none of His. And without the Spirit, we can't preach. We just got to mind the Lord. We're glad for all who's here today. We're glad to see Bob actually here today. We really appreciate it. It's good to be in the church with my sisters. You know, my brother, I know you're all my brothers and sisters, but to have those that you're born with. That's right, amen. You know, to, to, to be with, we're just glad to, to be a biological, I guess. But uh, good to be with you today, it really is. Got a couple more out there I would like to get in here. Amen. And uh, so they can hear the truth of the Word of God and live a good, holy, and upright life for Jesus. Be ready when He comes. I'm afraid lots ain't going to be ready when He comes. We gotta get steadfast in this time, unmovable yeah. in the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he, he didn't ordain a wavy way; he had ordained a straight way. That's, right. That's what he ordained. You know, to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine is not good for your health, and it's not good for your spirit either. Amen. It ain't either way; it's not good for you. Chapter thirteen. I'll, I'll read the first verse, and we'll pray, and then we'll say it, and I go through the chapter here. You know what the Lord is. Laid on my heart. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or something simple. Charity here is love. Dear most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today. We want to ask you, Lord, that you send your anointing, Lord God, on whatever it takes, Lord, to get us to hear this message today, God. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord. And we believe that we're in your heart today, God. Well, we love you, Lord, and we know there's many things in the Bible to preach, Lord. We want to preach, Lord, what you give us, Lord, for this hour, Lord, that you know who needs it, even if it's just me, God. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, God, for your Holy Ghost and your power, Lord, that leads us. We thank you, Lord, for every testimony here today, every sung song. We thank you, Lord, for every tear that's been dropped here today and every, every chill went up the back, Lord, and everything. But, Lord, we solely don't take and depend on that always. Lord, just knowing, Lord, who you are today, Lord, and what you've done for us. Lord, it's enough for surety, Lord, to keep us walking in this path. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your wonderful kindness, and we thank you for your mercy and grace and truth. We ask it all today in the name of Jesus Christ and that. Amen. Amen. Everybody give them a hand clap and be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love, which is charity there, I have become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. It says, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith and so I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have love, charity, which is, it profit me nothing. The Bible says charity suffereth long. I was just uh, writing down some meanings of some of these words here just thanking on them as uh, the Lord has bid me on this, but we, we, it says suffers long, and you, you look into it, it means the same thing as long suffering. Right. You, you got to have long suffering. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit that we have in our life. 
And it's uh, long suffering from the Greek word is make It says it means long tempered or patient. Think about this. Contrary to the popular view, a person who is long suffering is not weak or meek. Instead, he or she is strong in character and bold in resisting rash reactions. Amen. Means tempered or patience. Love. That's love. That's right. When we say we love somebody, this is the way God's measuring your love for that person. How often in vain do we say I love you? And then fly off a handle on the next bend towards you. That's right. How often? I mean it's true. It's love. Yep. We say we love you, but what what are we loving? Really is we gotta think this is God's love. 13th right. Corinthians is God's love. Yeah. It's not my made up love. This is God's love. Right. He's teaching us here how when we say love, how our love ought to react, how our love ought to express, how it ought to be towards one another and toward everybody else. Not just Christians, but the dopehead down there right. that we call, Lord, forgive me, the drug addict. I'm sorry, Lord, for calling them dopeheads. I'm done with that. They're drug addicts. They're humans. They're, they're human beings. Yes, they and they need the Lord in their life. They need delivered from what they're in Amen. and brought into this marvelous life. They're good. I didn't like it when people called me dope head when I was doing dope because I don't think they like us doing it to them. We need to Amen. respect them as human beings and who they are. I love the Lord. Yeah, they're sinners. They need God in their lives. And, but we, but, they, but long suffering is more than just sitting at home waiting on something. We get long suffering is walking into this thing. Uh -huh. Walking towards people with the love and kindness that God puts down in our heart that we pray for each day. Amen. That knowing, Lord Jesus, that Lord, they might be walking in the wrong right now or they may be lost. But Lord, give me your love and your long suffering that I can do it. That don't mean to take him that don't mean to sin with them or get let them get comfortable in their sin. It it means to take and be long suffering with them, Brother Wayne. Amen. I'm around people a, a lot. That they still cuss, Wayne. Right. They still cuss. They still use foul language. They still, and I'm just being long suffering with them. And you know, there at times I'll have to say something. At times that I remind them of the Lord and that who I am in God and what they should be respecting and things. But but we still got to be long suffering with them. Just can't cut everything off with them and go on. But I love the Lord. He's a good guy. God's gonna cut this thing one day. Yeah. He's gonna come and he's gonna separate us. From the tires, he really is. And yeah. I'm waiting on that sickle. I'm telling you, I love the Lord. He's a good God. But I want his sickle. I want things to happen here and now. I don't want him to wait. I don't want to see the angels at the four winds of the earth to come and make their gathering. That'll be the time for the separation. Because if the separation comes at that time, Brother Wayne, there ain't going to be no reuniting. There ain't going to be because the Bible teaches that the tires is going to be casted into the fire, into the oven, and the wheat's going to be tucked into his garner today. But I want right now my separation to happen. I want the wind of God to be blown upon me today to separate the chaff from who I am and who I used to be to become that whole grain of wheat that he's desiring to be in his flour, that he's desiring to be in his cornmeal or whatever it may be. I want to be that wheat right now. I want to have my head bowed. I want to be ready to go when he comes. I want to be ready to harvest when he comes, Brother Wayne. I don't want to be caught half grown. I want to be caught in love and be mature in Christ. Be full grown in Christ that when he comes that he's getting what he's coming that he's sent his word after yes. he didn't send his word after people listen we've got all this to become mature yes. we can become mature in Jesus Christ if we want to kind it says charity suffers long and is kind kind is not to be harsh sharp or bitter kind don't be harsh Sharp or bitter. Watch yourself when you talk to one another. Amen. I've taught it to my kids and my wife. and I know I've said it here before to the congregation that the words you say next may start something or end something. Right. We need to watch ourselves. Amen. Give the love. Don't be harsh and bitter toward people. Don't call them names. Right. Don't call them stupid. Right. Don't call them ignorant and dumb. Don't do these things. You know, we, we take and we, we catch ourselves sometimes doing this to our kids. Yeah. We don't need to do it to our babies. 
We need to teach our babies right. why they call each other that is because you call them that. Yeah. We'll smack them for saying something like that to one another, but when we call one, let's smack ourselves in the mouth every now and then. Yeah. I'm telling you, day chase is real. Do right. not be bitter. It's not new. Let's take and watch ourselves toward one another. Our kids learn from what we do toward one another. Right. They really do, and whatever we're approving, we're, they're giving them permission to do it. That's why I always told people that smoked or chewed or whatever. When they catch their kid doing it, don't whoop that kid. You yeah. taught them what to do. Amen. When you catch them doing, say, killing frogs or killing cats, and you do those things, then no, you can't say nothing to them. You can't. If you correct them for it, you stop doing it yourself. Amen. If you correct them for it, you take it, that correction for yourself also. Because what I want to see my baby do, I don't want to do myself. Right. I don't want to do it because it's not approving. Under yeah. God, it's not approving under the parents. Yeah. It's the truth today. We gotta to live this acceptable life, and we gotta teach our kids to be acceptable not only to God but into the place that we're at right now. We're supposed to prove what's a good and acceptable and perfect will of God, ain't we? Right. Is that what the word says? It's up to us to prove this. We are called out, set out different. Certain people's got certain things that they use in their house for certain things and I don't want you using my oil jug for gasoline. I don't want you using my gas jug for kerosene or my kerosene jug for diesel. I've got it set apart for a certain reason and that's the only thing that goes in that church. We've got to understand we're set aside for the master's use and holiness and righteousness should be coming and prevailing out of this holy temple that God set aside for his use today. Not anything profane or to blame. We don't have to blend in church. we got to set apart today. We can't blend in with the world. We've got to be separate and holy today. Amen. Certain things. I love the Lord, but He's asked us to be kind what time we're here. Be kind. I know when we get over all this, it's just going to be normal. But down here, we've got an enemy against us, right. which is the flesh. We've got an enemy, and his name's Satan. Yep. And he's tucking whatever. We was born into this flesh. You don't have to tell not one of these babies in here to steal. They automatically know how to steal. Amen. You don't have to teach them how to lie. They automatically know how to lie. Amen. But there's a constant war in getting our flesh under subjection of the will of God under the right thing that he presented in the garden, that fell in the garden. But now we've got to constantly fight with this thing. Right, to keep it under subjection. I don't care if you've been in church 80 years, you're going to fight with your flesh. You're going to fight with it. It's just, it's going to happen. But we've got a spirit inside of us can overcome. Amen. And if we become subject to the spirit of God, then we can walk in the spirit of Christ. We won't fulfill the lust of this flesh. But we've got to keep it. He asks us to be kind. It says, and not, it says, envieth not. Envy is to have a warmth, have a warmth of feeling for or against effect. Covet earnestly, have desire or move with envy. Be jealous over. Don't be jealous over me. You shouldn't. We shouldn't be jealous over each other. Right. And things that maybe you know they call it moving up and. And this and that, you're moving up in God, or if your testimony, or, or if you can sing good, or whatever. We need not to be jealous of those things, envious of those things. Amen. Let's just take and work on who we are in God and what we can do in God. We look so much on what we ain't doing sometimes, we need to start looking at what we are doing. And working more into that. Amen. And like we was learning and, and as we was talking about in the gifts of the Spirit in here, maybe there's certain things that we've passed up along our way that we should have been that we should have seen happen that God used us in that we should have pursued it. Right. We should have pursued that one thing. Maybe it ain't everything that God's going to use you in in that manner or whatever, but that one thing. I get that testimony of that boy down at West Hamlin where his leg got lengthened back out to normal. There's just a man that are working at Geno's. He said, and he heard his testimony. He said, God has made me to, I help people with shorter legs than others. Uh, how, how, Lord have mercy. He noticed that God helped him with, that he could heal people with shorter legs than others. He singled out what God used him for once. Amen. And he said, I, this is, and that boy sat right there and Geno put his legs up and he was prayed over three times and his leg was normal. Said he felt the virtue and power of God go through him every time the man prayed. And he had got to get rid of his shoe, Bob. The shoe that made him tall as the other one. And everything. He's limp left and everything. 
just because this guy said, I can help you. I noticed that I helped this one, that their leg be longer. I'm going to pursue this God. If this is how you're going to use me, well, Lord, it might kind of sound simple. It might kind of sound silly, but there's somebody out there limping that wants to walk straight. There's somebody out there with a problem that the devil, you know what caused his leg to be like that? It was a car wreck that the devil had tucked and got him in and shortened his leg, and God said, I can restore all things up to you. And he did this today for that boy. He's a good God, church. He's able when we take him. Quit being jealous over what people can do. Focus on what God's using you in. And take it to whether it's, I'm telling you, mommies at home, if God's using you at home and with your children in certain ways, grab a hold of that. And pray about that. I can help my children right here. You may only get to preach at home, but preach at home. You may only get to preach at work. Preach at work. It don't matter. Grab what God's using you and say, I am in this kingdom. I am. through to the Holy Ghost. It's that they got the Holy Ghost. That's right. It's God. We don't need to hear your number. Amen. Give God the glory. Amen. It don't matter how many you've baptized. That's right. You better give God the glory. Amen. We better do it. You know what happens in old age? That's all you'll have is your number. Yeah. That's all you'll have is your number. Amen. If that's how you concentrate on it. If that's how you put it in your life, you better give it all to God. Each Amen. and every bit. When we lay on our deathbed, we better say everything I've done has been for the glory of God. It's not been for myself, but it's been for the glory of God. I love the Lord. I have a hard time, and I don't want to get used to it either. When people stand and say something about me that's good towards me, my head's got to go to the floor, Brother Wayne, because I don't want nothing lifted up before me. Jesus, my example is Jesus never did give nothing to the flesh he gave it all back to the Father never took anything he was laying hands on a sick walking taking everything he could take just go catch that fish and get us some money out and pay our taxes he never took nothing like that and give it to the flesh he always said what I see from my Father I do what I hear from my Father I say everything you've seen me do come from the Father he never give nothing to this flesh we need to not catch ourselves Vaunting ourselves and boasting ourselves and putting ourselves in a place of God where He's the only place He sits. He's to get all glory. He said He shares His glory with another. He does not share His glory with another. He won't share it today. He won't give it to you. It's all His. We serve a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And all glory must be given unto Him. Let's not find ourselves lifting ourselves up. We can't do that. Let's not lift ourselves up in places that, that we shouldn't be. Amen. It's all right, people. It does help you when people say kind things about you. And you're noticed on what you do and things. Doing like that. But I, I take it. I, I don't do it enough, but we should lift each other up around our houses. We really should. I don't tell my wife enough how good she is. I really don't at times. I don't tell them. I don't notice my kids and pick out the, the best things about them. I'm, I'm quick to say the wrong thing, you know, the things that they're doing wrong. I'm very quick, but I've slacked on telling them the good things, and Lord, help me with that. I want to tell them the good things. I want to notice it, Brother Wayne, the good things that they're doing, and not only the bad, but lift them up when they need lifted up, and taking in the things that they're doing today. I love the Lord. He's a good God, but let's keep ourselves humble before the mighty hand of God. Don't pray that God humble you. Humble yourself. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Lord, I love you, Jesus. <coughs> it's not puffed up. It says, it's not. It's not puffed up. Puffed up. But that's not uh, what we sometimes get behind a pulpit and say they get puffed. 
it, 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 they get mad and walk off and all that, but it's, which I guess it is kind of too. It says to be showing one's pride by the way one behaves. They get puffs, they roll their eyes, they shrug their shoulders, they move in certain ways. And you just you just love that when you're preaching, you know, and you get all this body language that people produce what time you're preaching because it's hit them so hard they can't sit on their seat. You ought to say, thank you, Lord. They're squirming back there. Amen. Their eyes can't even stay forward. They roll plumb back in their head, Lord. Take them somewhere what time their eyes is back there. Let them see something what time their eyes is plumb back in their head. Roll them at the preacher. Maybe they'll see something that they need to change in their life or something that they need to walk into in their life. It says, or holds one's body arrogant. Let's not be puffed up people. Let's be a people that can love in the way that God's asked us to love. But those are those are the thing here. It says, "Do it not behave itself unseemly." It says, uh, "Keep that's rudely." It says, "Don't be rude." It's taking. Let's see how we hold when we present it. When we take a walk toward people, one thing. Let's you know. We got this thing of uh, having a voice of intimidation. <clears throat> that that's how we must get people first to look at us. Now I know in school, if you you, you approach people just right, they're scared of you. You understand? They're scared of you, man. It, no matter if you could fight, or no matter if you you was the dominant one, if you had that voice and you had that demeanor about you, buddy, no matter if you could do it or not, they're scared of you. It didn't matter. Don't mess with him, man. He should hear he talk to me. But the thing is, one day what happened? They met their they met their match. Yeah. They met their match. And if we all the time keep ourselves meek and keep ourselves lonely and keep ourselves where God asks us to be, there'll never be a match. Right. You understand? Right. There'll never be a match. The big I've I've humbled the biggest guys. I ain't bragging on me, but I've had them talk to me so wrong and nose to nose cussing me. And to be able to come back with what God gives me in a humble voice and speak to them and respect that they are a human. It's humbled them, Wayne. Right. Then wasn't very long. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry for the way I've talked to you. Amen. I'm sorry. What does love do? It hides a multitude Amen. of sins. Right. It hides a multitude of sins, it's Brother Wayne. And the way we take and confront things, the way we handle things, as praise be to God, we can take and hide a multitude of sins. We can show people the right way to do things. We really can. And I get examples of it through the day, about every day. If you're taken out here working in the public or working around people, buddy, your stuff gets tried. You hear me? Oh, yeah. Your ways in God gets tried. Oh, yeah. They do every day. And do you fight with anything? Oh, yeah. You fight with anything. Flesh wants to do it one way. God said, remember my word. Remember my word. Don't be rude. Don't be, Don't take and be unseemly. Don't do these things. Yeah. Don't, I'm telling you, he reminds us not to be puffed up. He reminds us not to fall ourselves. He reminds us how, why? Because the word is hidden in my heart that I won't sin against him. I gotta love the way he loved, Brother Wayne. Right. Gotta love that way. I wrote down that uh, love has mercy, love has forgiveness, but love does not condone sin. Love will confront sin, is what love does. And, and uh, <clears throat> we're taking it, took me to this about the. Uh, about the woman, the little adulterous woman. Love is, loves a, I'm just going to read something. It says, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> and early in the morning he came again to the temple. And all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set their heart in the midst, her heart, her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in, a, in adultery in the very act. They brought, they brought her, they brought her in the, in the uh, sensation of law. That's how they brought her. This is who, what we've done. This is what she's done. And now we're bringing her to the Word. This is what the Word must do. What's the word going to do about this woman that we caught in the very act? It says, but they didn't realize they was talking unto life. The Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And Jesus said these words, I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. It says, so it says, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. 
Now Moses and the law commanded us that shuts should be stoned. But what saith thou? What saith thou? He said, I'll never forget this next. It says, then this they said, tempting him, that they might have accused him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger rode on the ground as though he heard them nodding. I learned from a Jewish teacher that when he knelt down to write in the sand or in the dirt, was the same as God writing on the tablets that day. Yeah. How it moved me when he said this. And that same guy said, if you know a good Jewish person that can explain a lot to you about Jewish ways in the Bible, that it'll bring it out more. And, and you can see God bent down there and writing in, you know, everybody says what they think about it. But the fact of the matter was that he was writing, he was writing it in the ground. He was the one giving the finger, and he was right. He may have just went ahead and wrote exactly what he said. Because why? Because he was the Word. He said, I'm bringing now the New Testament into this right here. He brought, he showed them right there, the New Testament ways into the Old Testament. He said, I'm going to show you what's going to happen right now through me. And he brought it, and he said, it says, Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what saith thou? And they said, Tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground, and as though they heard them, as he heard them not. And when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Brother Wayne, what if he just wrote that in the ground? What if he just wrote that down there and said, this is settled down. This is, this is by my finger. Amen. By my finger now has been written and this is what we're, it's going to go by. Amen. And thou amongst you, who has no sin to cast the first stone at this woman? Who of you are to say that this woman needs to be killed? You standing there with sin in your life and, and these things that Brother Wayne is, and it, it goes right on down and says, and again he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. And when they had heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. See, the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. And when the Spirit revealed unto them what a sinner that they was, and what kind of sin that they was in, Brother Wayne, yeah. then they started looking. That's what the Word of God gets us to do. And they want us to quit saying things behind the pulpit. They want us to quit naming sin. They want us to take and preach a, a watered-down gospel. But a full-strength gospel will get you looking into your life. What time you're sitting on your seat, a full-strength gospel of Jesus Christ will get you looking through your house to get the things out that's wrong. It'll get you to take and look into your life and apart from sin because you're naming God's name in your life and His name's Jesus. Amen. It'll cause you to take and set aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you is what it'll do when the Spirit comes in Amen. and gets you to look to an anointed preacher about these things. Amen. Lying is a thing today that nobody anymore wants to look at as wrong. Amen. If it's for my own well-being, it's all right, preacher. No, the Bible says all liars have their part in that lake that burneth with fire. All liars, you can't lie. You're going to learn your kids how to lie. And then what they got to do, they got to fight with lying. they got to fight with this. And I've always said, if you'll lie to somebody, then you will kill somebody. If you'll kill, I'm telling you, if you'll lie to them, you'll steal from them. It is the same thing. It's the same thing, Brother Wayne. And God looks at us as the same. Amen. He really does. We need not to lie one another. Right. Lie, white lies, black lies, it's all a lie to God. Lie. Whether it's over a piece of bubble gum or if it's over a million dollars, it is a lie. Amen. We've got to teach our children not to lie. Amen. I tell mine all the time I can work with the truth, but a lie I can't work with. Right. Can't work with a lie. No. You've got to tell daddy and mommy the truth. If you don't, we can't help you. Right. We can't help you. It's the same way it is in a court of law or anything. They can work with the truth, Brother Wayne, but you know what a lie does? It'll trip you up. Oh, yeah. It'll get right on down the line. It'll mess something up. Yeah. It really will, and it's going to be brought to light one day. Oh, yeah. I love the Lord Church. He's a good God. Oh, yeah. Bless all, but that's what the, the, the letter would have just killed her. 
and they would have walked off, and that's where the church is getting today. They just kill people for the things they're doing, and they don't. They just kill them. They don't try to help them. They just put them out. They don't try to help them. They just try to kill them and say you ain't worthy. You can't do it. It just you've gone too far. But Jesus is a merciful God. I thank you for His mercy. His mercy, the Bible says, endures forever. But there's a time when grace is going to run out, church, and we need not to be drunk on grace. He ain't coming after people drunk on grace. He's coming after those that saying, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. He's looking for a people saying, God forbid sin. He's looking for John the Baptist to stand up against sin and not have sin in their life. Paul said, will stand up and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and have not sin in their mortal body and give it an example to this lost and dark and dying world that Jesus Christ, he was a man with no jewel in his mouth. He was found not with sin in his life, but he still gave his life on a cross of Calvary that we can have life and have it more abundant. Didn't deserve to die on that cross, but for me, he died on that cross. For me, he shed his blood that I could have. That when God looks through me, he's looking through the veil of blood to me. Praise be to God. And if he don't see the blood in my life, he's seeing a rotten sinner. That's right. Amen. He that saith he hath no sin, he make God a liar. And we do not love God if we say we have no sin. Amen. We can do our very best, Bob. We can do our very best. And I'm sure I go through every day probably and sin in ways that I have no clue. That I have no clue what I'm doing. But praise be to God, I'm doing my very best to live by this word and do by this word. Is that even good enough to the law? No. But that's why we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. I got an advocate for those things. Amen. I don't go around sinning willfully. We need not to teach our kids to sin willfully. Right. People's Amen. got it in their hearts. I just ask God to forgive me. He knows this is for my well-being right now. He knows I need this money. He knows I need this. But let me tell you, when God turned His face from you, He's asking for repentance. He's not asking for you to ask forgiveness. Right. He's asking for repentance. Amen. That you turn from that thing and not go do that thing right. no more. Amen. Repentance. They've got repentance and forgiveness mixed up. Yep. Sure. They've got it mixed up. They think just asking for forgiveness over and over. You know what you're doing? You're grieving the Holy Spirit of God whereby you sealed up until the day of redemption. We can't be grieving the Holy Spirit of God. We've got, we need to teach our kids sin, sin, and it's against God and you must repent. You've got to do your first works over right. when you walk in the way knowing these things that you're doing. I live in so much fear that when it's presented to me, I say, what if this is the time that I'll never get back if I do this? And I can't do it. I can't do it. Have you ever done something? Yeah, I've done it again before. And I've begged and I've pleaded and I've took and asked God to forgive me and I've been miserable over it for a long time. And you say, well, God, and you got preachers say, well, God's forgive you. I know that. But just knowing that I defiled myself with sin, that I'm God's holy temple. We ought to have a little bit more taking remorse over this thing instead of just standing up and saying everything. We ought to listen to it. It's the truth today. If we do something against our neighbor, we'll take and plead and beg and we'll call and we'll say sorry so many times and we'll continue saying sorry. Even though they say, I forgive you, don't worry about it. You'll say sorry to them. And we think that God it ain't no different. I love God. I know He forgives me for things. Amen. But man, I just feel so bad when I when I do something wrong. Right. I'm tired of, whether I know it or I didn't know it, I feel so bad, Brother Wayne. Because I don't want to do it. You know, phone sometimes texting people, they got their word correct in it. Yeah. And sometimes it'll take one of your words and they'll make it a cuss word. I've had anybody yeah. ever had that to happen? Yeah, yeah and you, you don't read it real and you just push sin and there it goes. Man, immediately my heart drops in my belly. And there's people looks at them little words because they're four letter or three letter and they don't think nothing about it. I think something about it. I'm a holy temple. I'm a temple of God. I don't defend. He said he can defile a temple. God will destroy it. I fear God in that, Brother Wayne. He's the one that can smash me with his thumb. He's the one that can call me out of this existence and I'll never be no more destroy my body and my soul in hell. I've got to remember that. I can't get comfortable. That's the problem today. Parents is friends and not parents. God's is their buddy and God ain't nothing but a buddy to them. He's just a buddy. I hang out with him. Do whatever I want. Ask him forgiveness. He's going to get me in there. Jesus is just going to get me in there. He's the appropriation for my sins. He's the one that's getting me in there. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Let me tell you, it's 
to hurt and maim. You ain't going to get into the kingdom of heaven. You forsake God. If you forsake God and go back in your sin, you ain't sealed. Praise be to God. No more. The seal's going to be removed. You'll stand before him that day in full assurance thinking that you're going to get in. And he's going to say, depart from me. Why? Because you're working in iniquity. You ain't living the ways of God and doing what the Word asks you to do. Right. He's a good God. Does anybody believe this this morning? Oh, yeah. Anybody believe this? Oh, yeah. I believe in the true holiness of God and who He really is. That we must set ourselves apart. We're a true people of God. I don't want to be no make-believe. I want to be who He asked me to be, don't you? He's a good God. I thank you, Jesus. This it says, and again, He stooped down on the ground. They which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, a woman standing in the midst. Said from the eldest to the last. The Pharisees of the Pharisees were standing there. The scribes were standing, listen. It said who brought it to who brought them to them? It says the scribes and the Pharisees. Brought unto him a woman. Mm -hmm. Taken in adultery. Mm -hmm. Who was they? They was people that know the word backwards and forwards. Yeah. They know the Old Testament law. They know the Old Testament. They know whatever. Moses was their Jesus. Do you hear me? Yeah. He was their Jesus. And this is how we must go, they would say. But then Jesus comes and writing in the sand. Saying this is the way it's going to be now, boys. You look at yourself. You look at yourself and look how Jesus handled this. It says, When Jesus had lifted up himself, had saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where art those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Do you see the deliverance from the law right here? Do you see the New Testament deliverance from the law? How Jesus delivered us from the law? Who hath condemned you? Amen. Who hath condemned you? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And what against such there is no law. He come to, if Lord be to God, the word was standing out of the New Testament, standing right before her, telling her, The law condemneth you not no more. Right. Not no more. This law does not condemn you. It don't do it, but she didn't take and raise up Brother Wayne and stand and go back to that man and start laying back in that bed with him. No, she didn't. Jesus told her, look at this. It says, when Jesus lifted up himself and saw, but the woman said in her, woman, where art thou the accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said in her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He said, go and sin no more. We need not to take grace for an opportunity to sin. We need not to take what Jesus done for I believe that little woman went away fearing and trembling God Almighty and straightened her life up. I'm telling you, how can you have an encounter with Jesus and not straighten things up in your life? How can you have this thing happen to you, the man of glory? Take and see everybody, the law walk off from God Almighty. People don't get to close enough into this thing to look and see what the law was doing to them. Praise be to God the fourth time. Do you know what the law was? It was a thing we could not take and fulfill. It was a thing that we could not carry. It was a place that we couldn't but for one year get forgiveness of God and our sins was brought back up to us but the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on Calvary took and separated us from the sin of law and death and we today church can walk free in the name of Jesus. Amen. We got it if we want it. You want a blessing Look into how the law, how you're delivered from that law. Through Jesus. My God walked into the courtroom and said, make them free. Make them free. I know they got all the charges against them, but now they're free. Why? Just because I said so. Because I gave my life. I give my son's life on Calvary that they could be made whole today. That's who we are, church. We're the, we are under the covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And under this, all the things that we do, don't take it lightly that you shouldn't be doing them. Do them. They're for the glory of God. But there ain't none of it going to get you into heaven any quicker than His blood. Amen. None of it is going to get you any quicker than His blood. 
You can do all. You can sit in a hole back in a cave like a hermit and pray 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all them good works. But it still ain't covering what he done in the blood. It is. It, I'm telling you, Brian, I love him. He's a good God. I just I love that example that preacher used about the blood being over the door and on the doorpost. Amen. One man over here was worrying, told his son, said, and his son said, Daddy, are we going to make it, son? I don't know. But we're going to pray all night and just hope we do. And then the other guy was in there saying, yeah, we're making the blood over the door. Go to sleep and hush up. I'm going to sleep and sleep good. What mattered was the blood was over the door. Yeah. We got some worry warts going to church praying with their heart out, Brother Wayne. Amen. One day I believe he's going to raise them up and say, you made it. You made it. Yeah. You made it. You made it. Why? Because you applied the blood to your life. Because you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You've been filled with my precious Holy Ghost. And I've made I've had preachers that preach for years and said, I hope I make it. I don't hold it against them. I know what they mean. There's a fear of God. There's a fear of God. And you want to make sure you want to know. And the only way we know is to trust in the blood. That's the only way. I can't do nothing in my life or in my being to help me get there besides accept Him. And be who he is and do his commandments and do what he said to do. And that's from baptism, from repentance to baptism, being filled with the Holy Ghost, all of it. Amen. All of it is his, his word. And it, we must be, I'm telling you, we must take it, live it, and be obedient to it. The Bible says obedience better than sacrifice. And we must be obedient to the word of God. All of us sacrificed to come here today. Have we all been obedient to what he's asked us to do? Have we all been obedient and done what we need to do? He's a good God, ain't he? He's a good God. I thank you for his place right here. I thank you for this people. I thank you for a place to be free, that we can preach the way that we need to preach. And people's not offended. He said, if you're offended in his word, listen, we need not to be offended in his word. We need not to be offended in his word. And I'm telling you that I love the Lord. He's a good God, church. We can go on in Jesus. You hear me? You're separated from that law. He fulfilled the law. The one. Fulfilled the law to the, all the very letter. He fulfilled it today. And we must take and remember that today. He did. Some of us are in condemnation. And we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. Why not? If you're sinning, you ought to be. Because you're still in sin. The law still applies to you. Do you hear me? The Bible teaches that. If you're in sin, the law still applies to you. That's why he's a just God. And when he comes... What's he going to do? He's going to give judgment upon what? Sin. How's he going to judge it? By the law. Amen. If you be found in it, you're going to be judged by it. Amen. And what is it? Death. Death. Yep. For the wages of sin is death. Right. For the gift of God is through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the gift of God. Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's it. Can you see the comparison? Oh, yeah. Can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's, all it's all in Him. It's all in Jesus. I love Him. He's a good God. I praise Him. But we've got the promise if we'll just live in Him. You understand? That's right. Love has mercy and love has forgiveness. But love does not condone sin. That's right. It does not condone sin. God forbid. We cannot have it. If we love somebody, we'll stand up to their sin. Listen, when people name it the name of Christ, the Bible says they must part, depart from iniquity. Amen. Depart from iniquity. Amen. If we're still seeing sin in their life, Jesus is not in their life. No, you ain't going to mix my God in with it. That's right. You ain't mixing him in with it. No, sir, Reebok. You can't do it. That's what they're doing. They're trying to <coughs> put a little Jesus in with the world yeah. and make it look all right. No, sir. Can't do it. You can't do it. He won't mix. It's like oil and water. He won't mix. He won't mix. When it sets long enough, you know what happens? There's a separation. It will. Oil will go to the top. Water will go to the bottom. Same as gasoline. Gasoline will be in the top. And it'll go. Lord be to God. But you know what happens in a gas tank? You know what that fuel pump sucks up first? Water. You know what people suck it up first? The world. They might have a little bit of Jesus in their life, but you know what the people's getting? They're getting of what their God is. What they're yes. wanting. Amen. The world. Amen. They're getting it first out of their life instead of Jesus. But if you've got a full tank of Jesus, they can't help but suck Jesus out of you. <laughs> Amen. When you've got a full tank of gas, that car runs fine. Yeah. But if you mix it with water, she's going to start spitting and sputtering. Yeah. And before long, it's going to shut down. Amen. Then you've got a world of problems. You really do. I love the Lord. He's a good God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Anybody need to pray? Need anything from the Lord? You need anything?